What's up, football fans? We're back with another week of NFL fantasy football. It has been a mad, mad week. There's been lots of injuries, which we'll discuss briefly as they come up. And lots of big wins, lots of big losses. So let's get straight back into it, starting off with the Andy Dalton fan club. And as you can see right here, we had Fraser this week, who was on a two-game winning streak, my well, taking him up to three and three. I've extended my winning streak to three, however, and ended Fraser's good run of form. This score is quite comfortable. For a minute there, it looked a bit shaky, despite knowing I had the last players to play. But by Monday Night Football, I was pretty confident still. So let's get into what happened. First and foremost, Baker Mayfield had another up Another absolutely baller week for me. 33 and a half points is right where we want to be. Very, very happy with that. JK Dobbins, okay with 10 points. 10 points is absolutely fine when one of your running backs does 28, which is exactly what Bijan did. Bijan hadn't broken 20 points before last week. He's now broken it in back-to-back -back weeks. I knew betting on him would eventually pay off, and it looks like it might be starting to. Chris Godwin got injured literally on the last play of the game against Baltimore. He was having an okay week. He's been wide receiver number two in this league. And now it looks quite possible he's out for the season, which leaves me with a massive hole. I need to work out how I'm going to fill potentially. But seven points is absolutely fine from him. T Higgins continuing to get better for me. Fortunately, I've now got a probably a fancy wide receiver number one in T Higgins uh, having just lost Chris Godwin but that's a little bit of a concern because there are going to be weeks where T Higgins being the number two receiver of his own team isn't going to have that good of a week likely was my only tight end this week and dropped two points he's such an up and down player I've now dropped him to try and generate a little bit of space for a potential Godwin replacement should it be required James Cook was in at my flex didn't have a particularly good week but that score pushed him over the edge Tennessee on paper, pretty good against the rush in fantasy. So I didn't expect him to have an amazing week. But I, I, I just went purely based on matchups for that. And he, he did enough. Will Lutz was Thursday night football and gave me a big lead off the route for 15 points. And the Steelers defense against the Jets, 15 points. Steelers defense I'm going to hold on to for a few weeks. They so got a couple of good matchups. On my bench, Cooper Cup didn't play. But he's scheduled to be back, which is good with the Godwin situation. Josh Jacobs absolutely bulled out. Definitely worth me keeping an eye on him. Cockmet and Caleb Williams. I picked up Caleb Williams because he was trending the right way. Cockmet on a bye week, that's why he wasn't playing. Worthy didn't do much against the 49ers. Harrison did nothing against the Chargers, which is a little bit concerning with my now lack at wide receiver, which means I was, what, technically eight points off a perfect score, which is pretty damn good. On the flip side, Pat Mahomes, bang, fucking average. Tuba Hubbard, pretty good. Kenneth Walker, really good. Tyreek Hill, non-existent. Drake London, pretty good. Ingram, decent. Most up, poor. This is a really surprising one. Youngway Koo is, like, always doing pretty well. And, like, if he'd have made that 50-yarder, he'd have been on, like, eight points in this league, which is pretty damn good for a kicker. Yeah, Youngway Koo normally a pretty decent point scorer. Couldn't get it done. And the Chargers defense scoring nine points. Again, not bad, but not enough. Um, I end up winning that by, what, 50 points? I don't think he really left anything on the bench. 10 points at kicker, 1 point at tight end, and 1 point at quarterback. So his ideal lineup would have seen him net an extra 12 points. He would have broken 100. Um, but that's about it. On to the next matchup. Next up, we have Tom versus Pashley in a 78 plays 112 game. Jane Daniels had a bad week. He went out hurt relatively early, I think, which was part of that, a rib injury. Washington's still more than able to deal with Carolina in a 40-7 to win. Saquon Barkley, 30 points against the old enemy. Derek Henry, 30 points. So that was a fun running back number one battle. Of course, Mason scoring 10 points. In place of McCaffrey, who's still injured. Cooper Cup making his debut over at Buffalo with a 13-point score. You, you you like to see that. Ray Ray McLeod, pretty poor game. DK Metcalf, again, got hurt right at the end of that game, but did score 16 points before leaving the game. Malik Neighbors only matched four points in that loss to Philadelphia. Trey McBride, five points. Pretty good in this league for a tight end, especially when the other guy doesn't have one. ETN didn't play against Jacksonville. Pickens, 18 points. Really good. He might be someone that's worth stashing. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I looked to trade for. Aubrey didn't play. Claiming fair then 12 points. It was just a blowout. 112 points is a pretty good score that you'd hope would probably beat more than half the teams each week. Playing against 78, you never really had to worry. Shard White left on the bench with 26 points. Geno Smith left on the bench with 20 points, although Geno Smith wouldn't have been a smart decision per se. Wicks on the bench with 11 points would have been a big upgrade over McLeod. Overall, Pash just handled this 
win pretty easily. Would 112 have beat more teams? Not really, actually. This is a pretty difficult week. Next up, we've got James versus Scott, two top of the team, uh, top of the table powerhouses, both on win streaks coming into the week. And James has now managed to extend his win streak to six as Scott falls to four and three after a four game win streak. But these scores are close. 144.96 plays 179. Scott would have beat everyone else in the league this week apart from James, which has got to sting. But let's have a look at the numbers, see what went wrong. First and foremost, you had a, a double dip for James in the Broncos defense scored 31 points against New Orleans and Alvin Kamara only managed five points, a season low, I believe. Off rip being down 31 to five, they've had their defense playing, you've had your flex play, is not the position you want to be in. But let's look a little bit closer. Jalen Hurts finally getting back in the high scores with two rushing touchdowns to his name helped out a lot. Joe Burrow had a slow week. Running backs is is where a lot of the points came this week. 50 points. 50 points broken by both teams here. Kareem Hunt and Kyron Williams went in 50 points. At basically dead on. Or 51 points rather. Aaron Jones and Tank Bisbee have getting what? 54 near as damn it. Really, really close there. That extra score from Bigsby. Really, really a difference maker on that side of things. Wide receiver. This is where things start to separate jamar chase slower week again joe burrow slow week and Jalen reed or jay dunn reed sorry only 1.75 points on the flip side aj brown 17 points amon Ra st brown 19 points really strong wide receiver room right here tight end he fought back a little bit george kittle getting 10 points dalton kincaid mitigating that with five you're pretty happy flex joe mixon 32 points so to be clear here from his skill positions excluding his quarterback two running backs two wide receivers and flex which is half your team he scored 55 54 plus 3 57 87 plus another third he scored 110 points from these these guys have averaged between them like 22 points on average which is insanity evan mcpherson down with three points and then the cream of the crop broncos 31 points you love to see it. The commanders did their best to counteract that. It just wasn't enough. Jalen Reed underperforming is absolutely the stick of dynamite here. So he's up 10, he's up 15, he's up 7, he's up 3. Boom, like that. Down 16, down 11. Boom. Flex and Reed ruin this game. And was there any points left on his bench? Not really. Technically, yes, but not enough to swing this. And James. On paper, could have had another, what, 14 points? Robinson wouldn't have been an upgrade. Yeah, so it would have just been Ertz and Goff. Could have netted him an extra four points there, an extra five points there, which would have been an extra nine points. He could have tapped out 188, whereas Scott could have tapped out at what? He would have tapped out 153. They both could have beat anyone else this week, but it just wasn't enough to beat James. That's really unlucky for Scott. He is a very dangerous team to keep an eye out on for sure. Let's get into the next matchup. And here we have it. Anchor has finally got her second win of the year against winless Ryan. One curse was going to get broken. Either Anchor was going to win another game or Ryan was going to finally win a game. I'm sure Anchor is much happier with this outcome so let's have a look put up a very good score here Jameer Gibbs 40 points really really um won this game for her you take him out and just put him on even 10 points these scores are a lot lot closer Jordan Love did his best James Connor did okay A-Chan did okay the real issue here is Devonta Smith losing in points his kicker losing him points and Puka Nakua not even playing he would have been better off actually having less players on the pitch this week, which is insanity. Anchor's going to be a little bit concerned about a wide receiver room here. Diggs, three points. Wondell Robinson, three points. Deontay Johnson, 1.8. It's not great, and she doesn't have... She has Alave on the bench, who didn't play and is questionable, following his knockout concussion last week. She could have had a kicker who scored 22 points, which would have scored, netted her an extra 10, but you can't play multiple kickers. Madison probably should be going in as a flex. She's got a decent running back room. Maybe she needs to rely on them a little bit and only leave herself two wide receivers to choose between. That's definitely a point of concern. There's just not a lot of good fantasy wide receivers in this league because we don't play PPR unless you're getting touchdowns. They're worth niche. So yeah, maybe that's something we need to readjust the rules to look at going forward. Pretty one-sided game here. Mark Andrews having another good week for Baltimore finally. A-Chan back in it. Ryan can probably steal a win in the coming weeks um, with this squad if players stop costing him points. Because he would have broken 100 points this week, if not for them. One to look out for. Can Ryan win a game for the end of the season? 
Mm. And then to wrap it up in the Andy Dalton fan club, we have Dad versus other James. Dad back on the winning streak. James on the losing streak. They have flipped their streaks over. Let's see what the points say. Lamar Jackson absolutely balled out. 40 points. Very, very happy, I'm sure. CJ Stroud, really poor week, not even breaking six points. Dave Montgomery, six points. Tony Pollard, 10 points. Devonta Adams, three points. Tank Dell, not even one. Where did his points come from? Here we are, flex and defense. Brian Thomas in his flex scored 18 points. Eagles, 23 points. And Tyler Bass with nine points as well is pretty helpful. On the flip side, Najee Harris scored well. Charbonnet did nothing. McLaren didn't do too much. Jefferson did a lot. But again, another flex costing people point. A flex is more harm than good. Travis Kelsey got two, but Williams lost two point, a quarter of a point, sorry. Um, and I believe he's now suspended for two games as well. Harrison Butker only got four points. Rams defense did okay. But yeah, they're not a lot in this game at all. For relatively high scorers as well. I mean, take off dad quarterback. Take that down to just... 15 points, say, and he's on, what, 96. So, yeah, pretty underwhelming week, I'd say, with defences being the second highest scorer on both teams. Definitely something they need to watch out for. Did they leave anything on the bench? Bucky Irving, 16 points. Would have been an upgrade over Montgomery and Pollard. So he played his wrong starting running back, but I'm not sure if that was a bad decision. Pollard against Buffalo, Montgomery against Minnesota are pretty good. I mean, Montgomery got a bit hurt, which is why he lost out on some touches, I think. What about over here? Kirk Cousins, despite only scoring 8.6, would have been an upgrade. You hate to see that as a uh, fantasy manager. Tyler Croft had 9 points, which would have been a huge upgrade. Alan Lazard, 6.4 points, would have been an upgrade over his flat. There was more points to be had here, but I don't think there was enough points to swing the tie at all. And that is it for the Andy Dalton fan club. Let's switch on over to the Ghoulie 12 League. And here we are in the Ghoulie 12 League, where I am now on a four-game winning streak. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, four games without a loss. We absolutely do love to see it. And Ian, on the flip side, is now on a three-game losing streak. Oh no. Let's see what's happened here, shall we? So I have CJ Stroud in this league. He underperformed pretty heavily. Fortunately, he and has Pat Mahomes, who didn't exactly blow him out of the water. Tony Pollard did okay, although not as good as Chuba Hubbard. Bijan Robinson coming in clutch with 23 points to beat out Ty Chandler. We love to see that. Mike Evans scored nine and a half points before also getting hurt. Might be a cause of concern here. Does it hurt Baker's value going forward? We'll have to wait and see. Deontay Johnson, two points. Next up is where we both had our big hitters. Brian Toms, 22 points in that London game. Mega performance from him. And enough to keep DK Metcalf's 19 points from not really affecting us. Fry moves seven points, beat out Kelsey's five. Najee Harrison at flex has done bits for me. 16 points over three. Um, Will Lutz again. I love matching up my kickers and or defences if I can, just because it makes it so much easier to keep track of, track of. Will Lutz, 17 points, huge, versus Justin Tucker's 13 points. And then Giants' defence only scored four points, but 49ers' defence only scored five, as he decided it was a good idea to have his tight end and quarterback going against his defence. That's personally something I avoid. Let me know. Do you try and avoid that? What about on the bench, though? I had Aaron Rodgers on the bench. I could net myself an extra eight points. Lazard technically would have been an upgrade at wide receiver, but only barely. And that is it. Ian, on the other hand, could have had 20 points from Mark Andrews. He could have had an extra two points at quarterback, which would have given him an extra 17 points, which would have taken him up to 90. And that is basically it. So even he did not have enough points to uh, change the tide in this game pretty low scoring week hopefully we can uh make a few changes tweak some bits and properly get gunning it again for next week next up we have josh versus tony and josh is now on a five game losing streak this might be an all-time low for him as well 68 points he didn't even break 70 points this week whereas tony 115 comfortable winner in this game and i'm sure he'll be over the moon let's see what the book score says i can't imagine it says a lot for josh having only scored 68 points kirk cousins seven points jk dobbins 9.6 brian robinson 13 not horrific so far tyreek kill two points williams 0.6 mcbride 10 hn 10 myers 12 charge defense three that's really rough just no one you had a few guys doing okay if other people pop up but not even getting three points out of your wide receiver room is just, you can't win with it. And then on the flip side, Lamar Jackson, 34 points. Derek Henry, 25 points. 
That's 15, that's 50 points right there. No, that's nearly 60 points right there. That's almost Josh B. Tyler Algier, five and a half, not quite. AJ Brown, 19 points, that is Josh B. Josh could win this game with three players. Granted, there are his three highest scoring players, but I don't actually think he needs all of them to win this game. Quarterback, running back one, and defense would have won him the game alone. Everything after that is um, bonus, which is pretty good in all fairness, because Tyler Algier didn't break six points. Devon Smith didn't break a point. Tight end a little bit low. Lad McConkey didn't break 10. This is very much a case of Lamar and Derek Henry have put you in a position where everyone else just has to not completely fuck up. And you're going to do okay. And that's exactly what's happened. Whereas Josh was the complete opposite side. If he had Lamar and Derek, everyone else's scores wouldn't have been as big a problem. Just goes to show um, how much superstar players can help you. Surely Josh has left some points on the bench here. Seven points for Zach Moss wouldn't have got in. 16 and a half for Keon Coleman would have got in. And would have... Made it somewhat interesting. Would put them up at 84 at least. No points left. Oh no, there was three points left on Tony's bench with Bates as the kicker instead of Butker. Hopefully Josh can turn it around and win some games again soon. Next up, we have Joss versus Cameron. Cam now on a four-game win streak. It's nuts. Joss has lost two in a row now. Get a little bit scary over there for him. 162 to 120. Let's see what the numbers say. Baker, 27. Keon Walker, 23. Rashad White, 29. Justin Jefferson, 21. Boom. Then first four numbers fill you with so much confidence. It's crazy. Reed, three points. Doesn't matter that you've had a bad game, pal. Everyone else is covering for you. Ingram, eight and a half. You love that freaking the tight end. And then at flex, 18 points. Kicker, 12. Defense, 20. Boom. This is... This is... Not what the NFL would call the perfect roster, but it's like a very, very good one. This team, I imagine, wins most matchups in the league this week. That's like, I don't know if there's a league in the world, even with a weird point scoring system, that this team like loses to everyone in a league or even multiple people in the league. There'll be like one team in one league somewhere that goes together and beats that. And it'll be basically the exact same team, but with someone else instead of Jalen Reed. Huge, huge week from Cam. He, he'll love to see that. Let's see what's going on over here, though. Brock Purdy, 17 points. Not bad. Saquon Barkley, 26. Not bad. Cook, 9. A little bit low. Ayuk, 4 points before getting hurt with a season-ending ACL injury. Ouch. Um, not, not helpful. Malik Neighbors, 8 points. Not great. Kraft, 12 points. That's pretty damn good. Kareem Hunt at flex, 22 points. Pretty damn good. Jay Kelly at four points. Eh. Bengals defense, 15 points. Normally pretty good, but still doesn't doesn't catch up on, on Cam's defense. And there was no points left on the bench. What's this? Bye week. Injured. Injured. Benched. Injured. Played poorly. Injured reserve. He's got nothing on his bench, and now he's got another wide receiver who's out for the season. Oh, Jossie boy, you are in trouble. And Cam had Amari Cooper on his bench, which would have allowed him to go up another 13 points to the 175 territory, which is brutal. Next up, we've got other Josh versus Oscar, and Oscar is back to his losing ways, and Josh is on the two-game win streak as 133 does, in fact, beat 87. Where's, where's the big difference makers here? Ah, running back, straight away you can see it. Kamara and Brown scoring 15 points compared to Williams and Hall's 47. It's a pretty difficult one to really beat when, when, once you're already down that big. But let's see how well he did to fight back here. Not very. He still lost out a wide receiver, despite it not being by as much, only by a point there. Tight end, George Kittle scored 15, Laporta only managed 3, Flex, Godwin before he got hurt managed 13 points, Zay Flowers only got 4, Kicker didn't make any difference really in defence, yeah, he's just, he's lost at every position basically, and even the positions he's won, he's not won by any substantial amount. When both your running backs score less than 10, and the other guys running backs combined for 45, unless everyone else on his team doesn't play, you're in big trouble. Any points left on the bench for anyone? Could have had an extra 9 points had he played Matt Gay. Oh, there's lots of points left over here. Williams and Otten, 18 and 26. Could have had an extra, an extra 22 points by playing him there. And an extra 15 points there. What that put him on 99 for just the flex swap. And then extra 15 would have had him on 114. So he's definitely got the players to make something happen here. He's just struggling to get them all on the field at the right time. 
Hopefully he can work that out. Not this week, because I'm playing him this week, but next week. Next up, I believe our closest game of the week, or one of our closest games of the week, Mick versus George. Uh, George is now on a losing streak, and Mick extends his winning streak to two. Let's see what's going on. Joe Burrow, 14. Mixon, 26. Jacobs, 20. How do you lose from here? How do you not even break 100 from here? You've got 60 points from your first three players. You've got seven players left, and you can't score 40 points. 17 points. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's 40. 60. 77 points from your first four players, and you can't score another 23. It must go off a cliff. Tank down, no points. Dalton Kincaid, eight points. Smith and Jugba, five, five, two. If I saw this and then didn't even break 100 points, I'd lose my mind. What was he beaten by? 111. Five, 15, 32. Christ, that goes up quick, doesn't it? Um, so, what, 20, 52 points. So he's winning after these three. Seven points from Diggs, 13 from Wilson. 14 from Ert, 6 from Adams. The, yeah, he should beat him in every position. Yeah, he loses some of these early battles. He's down 9, down 20, down 10 still. But then it gets into the second half here. Your, your, your grunt positions. Your, your, not your superstars. And he's just fought back on each one and just swung it back the other way. You can see why this was a close game. The worst bit is he's not really left anything on the bench. What Marvin Harrison scored five points. That would have been an upgrade and he would have broken 100 at least. There was nothing else. That is rough. On the flip side, he could have had even more points. Chubb and Irving would have been five, six points. Rough, rough one for uh, George Lair. He'll be, um, he's made a lot of trades and clearly they've not worked. And then finally, we have Wag and we have Luke. Luke breaking his losing streak, which means Wag has now extended to a four-game losing streak, which is beautiful. Um, after seeing the result this week, he put in the chat going, sorry, boys, I've been shit this year. Um, I'll try and be better next year, which is hilarious. He's already resigned himself. But let's see what the numbers say. So Wag managed to break 100 points. So this is our, actually, I believe, our closest game of the week. Let me just double-check that. Closest game of the week with only 11 points in it. Debo Samuel not getting any work has kind of made this game closer than it should have been. Interestingly, Luke decided to leave Aaron Jones on the bench instead of starting. And he started Stevenson. He also started Downs. Definitely feel like he could have got Jones in there. Maybe he knew he wouldn't be able to check his team on Sunday. Didn't want to take the risk of um, Jones not being fit to play. I don't know. Wicks with 13 points on his bench must hurt a little bit. Sam Donald 16. The Vikings defense 11 would have been downgrade. So I think we've got two near perfect lineups here. Just not a lot of points scored. Nothing from uh, Hopkins and Seabot scoring 16 points is, but th th there's your difference maker right there. If they both score the same amount of points, whatever that number is, Wag wins, but it's just not to be. Pickens 22 is pretty good. Kyle Pitts 13 is pretty good. Douglas and Robinson is a putrid wide receiver core. And then on the flip side, you've got Amaral St. Brown's going 25, which basically negates most of this anyway. Really, really rough there, but Wag's on a four-game losing streak, so we are loving life. That is it from the Fantasy Recap this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.